The following podcast is intended only for listeners who are intent on growing the business. Welcome to Innovate Marketing, where we are bringing you interviews with the brands, the influencers, and the nonprofits that are making waves and growing business. We are brought to you by mypodcast.media. MyPodcast.media produces high-quality podcasts that authentically connect you to your ideal audience. And now, I'd like to introduce you to your host for Innovate Marketing, Sherry Peek. Hello, and welcome to Innovate Marketing Podcast. I am your host, Sherry Peek, and today our special guest is Sue Siri. Hello, Sue. How are you today? I'm great, Sherry. How are you doing? Good. I am doing good. Thank you for asking. It's good to have you on the show today as I'm interested in learning more about you and this wonderful design that you have created. But before we get into that, Sue, can you tell us a little bit about your about your background? Absolutely. So I was a professional photographer my entire adult career, about 25 years in the industry. And I use that sort of deep industry knowledge to create an innovative product to take professional headshots and do integrated badging solutions for corporations and institutions. So you have this wonderful creation. What is it called? So this, this automation of myself is called the Iris Booth. Um, it's a, fully digital professional photo booth. So it goes off the nostalgia that we all feel about photo booths and how much fun and and how great they can be, but we've pulled it into the digital age and made it um, specifically designed for professional headshots. I need one of those right now as we speak, Sue. (laughs) It sounds like something that's really (laughs) convenient and easy to use. So let's talk about how did this concept originate? So I was, again, in the industry for 25 years, watching it decline slowly over the years. Um, Particularly, a couple of things were really instrumental around the time that I was creating Iris Booth. One was the advent of cell phone cameras and just how much better they were getting year over year. That was sort of a, a threat to the industry. And the other one was the, the selfie. So right around that time, Kim Kardashian released a book called The Selfie. Everybody was taking selfies. It was a relatively new concept. And I remember thinking there are teenagers and young adults out there who can take better selfies, who know their angles, who love to take their own photographs. Um, They don't need us. They don't need us photographers to tell them turn a little to the left or look to the light. They just instinctively grew up knowing how to capture really good images of themselves. All they were lacking were the professional tools. So I thought, what if I just marry the two? What if I give uh, this whole DIY generation the tools to take really high quality professional photographs? Um, So I was I was already noodling over this idea when I got an RFP from a local university to do, I think it was 4,000 grad photos. And as a professional high-end photographer, that job didn't appeal to me in any, in any way. But I was sitting with my family one night and I joked that I was going to take all my equipment, set it up in an empty classroom, put my camera on a tripod, tripod, record record my own voice using all the standard posing tips and then charge each student $20 to come in and take their own photo. And I was joking, but both my kids kind of said, you know what, mom, that's a really good idea. Kids would go for that. Both my children were in university at the time. So I set off to create this thing this this concept of this idea using cardboard and craft paper right in the middle of my living room. And Iris Booth was born right there. Wow, that's some wonderful kidspiration right there. (laughs) 
rooting their mom on. <laughs> yes. So what has been the response to the Iris Booth amongst your young professionals, college graduates, college students? Was it well received? Because I know they are the generation that are kind of moving a little bit more uh, quickly in some things, like you said, with the selfies and they kind of already know what to do. How did they respond to the Iris machine when you began to introduce it into the different environments in which you have them located? It has been incredibly well received. So my my obviously my background is in photography, not in business, not in startups, not in software design or software development. So I was coming at this from a perspective of a strong photographic background. The fact that it was so incredibly well received pushed this product to the forefront of uh, headshot photography because people love it. The minute you see it, it's one of those, really, this makes sense. I can't believe no one's thought of this. Um, we have a very strong and healthy academic partnership program. And we love that. We're in a number of schools because it levels the playing field for students who might not otherwise be able to afford a really professional photograph to start their career. Um, we're in a lot of institutional uh, settings, healthcare, universities, that kind of thing. Uh, we do a, a really slick integrated badging solution. So it's really picked up steam there as well. Um, so onboarding becomes this very easy process where new, new hires can go in, get a high quality professional headshot. It gets sent directly to the end user. It also gets sent directly to physical security. So you can take your photo, walk down the hall and have your badge waiting for you. Uh, but what's really nice about that is that photo that you're wearing around on your badge every day really is a photograph that you're proud to wear. It's not something that, uh, security guard took with an iPad in a dark room. It's actually a really beautiful portrait. So there's a sense of my employer cares about me. I have this great image. There's just a sense of coming to work on Monday morning. And that's one last thing to make Monday a little more Monday is a terrible photograph on the badge that you wear every day. Kind of like that driver's license some of us carry around, right? <laughs> Or passport photos, all those photos. I, I mean, there's so many places that Iris Booth could just make us all feel a little bit better about ourselves when we go about our day. I love that. And not only is it cost effective, but the time, the wait for a professional photograph has definitely been reduced as well because they can get, in essence, immediate access to that, which could make all the difference if you do not have a professional photo because I can remember a time that I needed one and I didn't have one and I think I spent a couple hours just trying to find someone to create one for me or to take a photograph for me and then it's still yet another day before I got the print back so I think that's a very uh, genius idea so I know that the iris booth like you talked about the students and young professionals they're located in universities and some airports who else would be an ideal target market for the Iris booth? So pretty much anybody who has a face is going to benefit from Iris booth because we're going to give you a very low cost, like you said, very convenient in real time, a headshot that you're going to like because you were the driver of producing that headshot. So the photo, the photos from Iris booth, are so fantastic because we've got this great wraparound lighting. It's very flattering. Um, we've got a slick user interface that anybody can use. You just go in, it's super simple. You take three photographs. You can edit one right there on a life-size touchscreen monitor. You can whiten your teeth. You can remove small blemishes. You can add filters. And as soon as you leave the booth, you get an email directing you to your photos. So they're almost instant. Um, those photographs can be used for uh, company directories. They can be used for badging purposes. They can be used, obviously LinkedIn is a, is a perfect partner for Iris Booth because everybody should be having a quality photograph uh, uploaded to LinkedIn. 
Um, so I just can't think of anybody who wouldn't benefit. Um, I remember when I started my career, the only people who had headshots would come in and spend, you know, $500 for a single image would be C-level executives or real estate agents. Today, you go to LinkedIn, everyone, everybody has a professional headshot, right? From my plumber to, you know, retail staff to, uh, I, can't, I can't think of anyone who wouldn't benefit uh, from a headshot. We're still human and we, we relate to faces. So even when we're shopping online, even when we're looking uh, for services online, it's always better to see a face. So seeing a, a well-lit professional photograph lends credibility to whatever you're looking for. I would agree with that. And looking at the Iris booth, the design is sleek, it's modern, it's very inviting. Tell us about how did you approach the design and how did that play into the market that you wanted to reach? So definitely there's um, a barrier to entry when you have an enclosed space. And we started with this iris booth, which is the enclosed space. And I wanted to make that feel as open and as, like you said, inviting as possible. So that what I remember of these old photo booths in malls when I was a kid is you would pull back this dusty black velour curtain and you would get into a dark booth. And it was just kind of creepy and wonderful at the same time. And I wanted to flip that completely on its head. I wanted to make it with rounded edges and lots of glass and, and a skylight in the top so you didn't feel like you were enclosed at all. But also part of that design was I wanted to make the booth as small and as manageable as I possibly could, but make it feel big. So it was also the illusion of space where it wasn't really as big as it feels. And just trial and error, we came up with this, you know, sort of fabulous, like you said, sleek looking product. And I also wanted it to replicate the technology that was built into it. So I wanted it to look like a digital product. I wanted it to look high tech. So uh, I think we, I think we did that. You did. It, it looks, like I said, it, it looks very, very nice. And I can see how that would be of interest or draw to your market for sure, because um, it's very trendy looking as well. You mentioned barriers to entry into the market. What was the, I'm just curious to know, what was the time frame from the conception of the ideal to the actual manifestation, if you will, of the iris booth? Was that a, a year's process or how long did that take you to bring it to fruition? Surprisingly little amount of time. So from the concept to our first prototype, which didn't look the way that it looks today, I would say that was about nine months. And I truly believe if I had understood at the onset what was involved in getting there, I probably wouldn't have had the courage to try because there was software development, there was product design, there was engineering, there was physical and mechanical and electrical. And all of these different engineers had to be involved. Um, not to mention, you know, the business side of starting a business and, and the fact that I wasn't, so I started this you know, really uh, late in my career. And there was a lot involved. But I had the benefit of not truly understanding what I was doing. So I had all of this kind of energy and, and false courage around what I was doing. So I pushed it through very, very quickly, without having a solid business plan. So I was able to create the product without really understanding how I was going to uh, make it profitable. So our first iteration of this was what we call the retail model. And you mentioned airports. That was one of our, one of our locations was airports and business centers and shopping malls where it, the business model was very much like that photo booth I remember as a child where you would go in, you would pay money and you would take photos. So the actual subject of the photograph was my client. 
And I like to joke that that was a very quick way to go broke because you're spending an enormous amount of money to try to make it back, you know, for pennies every time. So I would say we were in the retail market for a couple of years and decided that wasn't the way we needed to be. So we switched to um, more sales. We do sales, leasing, and rentals now. So now we sell the booth directly to um, schools, healthcare facilities, large corporations. We have a very, very healthy events program. We rent them. Um, we no longer have them available in public spaces for individual users. So that, that took us, so that's a long answer to a, a short question, my apologies. It took nine months to get the first one built, but it took us about three years to figure out the business model. Once we figured out the business model, it was just me running as fast as I could to keep up with the business. The business kind of grows organically year over year in such a way that it's just, it's, I feel like now the business is taking me for a ride and it's really fun. Oh, we love fun, don't we? We love fun. So you mentioned your business plan. Um, let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about the marketing component of your business plan. How did you develop your original marketing strategy? So we were very much building this on a shoestring. Um, didn't have a marketing budget per se. So we did a lot of you know, sort of low end social media stuff. And we were trying to get it out there and it was a new concept. It was a new product and we were trying to market it, blanket market it to too many people. So we just sort of understood that we didn't have the resources to get the traction we needed for retail sales. Once we were able to switch to sort of more of a sales based model, we didn't, I'll be honest, we've never marketed. We've never, since that first year, we've never even so much as paid for a Facebook ad. We don't do any marketing. We consider our event division to be our marketing vehicle with a net negative cost. So we actually make money from our rental division, but that's where people hear and see and come to know us. So we'll do these very large events where companies will hire us to be on site. While we're on site, we're being exposed and introduced to thousands of people at a time. So it really is very ideal for us in terms of marketing the product. That is ideal because um, usually marketing a product is can be an expensive line item in your budget, if you will. Absolutely. And so to think that you've created this product that has a relatively low marketing cost to it is absolutely amazing. And it just sounds like a wonderful uh, product that is, like you said, it's just drawing the interest just from being seen by others. Now, um, what has been the most successful tactic to date in creating as well as making the Iris booth available to patrons? I would say two things. I heard this really, really early on that the best marketing is a good product. So I put all of, and I also happen to like product design just naturally. So I put all of my attention, focus, resources into truly just building the very best product I can. Again, I take 25 years of deep industry experience, all of the pain points, all the friction points, and I try to smooth them out and make the process of getting a headshot, not just enjoyable, convenient, cost-effective. So marketing uh, for me, from a personal perspective, has always just been make the very best product. Because even if I had something, Sherry, that you wanted, and I was in Siberia, you would come and find me. It wouldn't matter where I was in the world. I could be in Australia. I could. We get calls from all around the globe. We are across the world right now. People find us no matter where they are. The second thing is customer service. Again, being a service, a fee for service, uh, creative professional, my entire career has taught me that customer service is everything. So you treat your customers well, you respond promptly. 
So customer service is the second thing that's really, I think, propelled growth because that generates word of mouth. It generates referrals. We always try to, you know, go above and beyond. And I know it sounds cliche, but customer service truly drives the business. I, I'm a firm believer in good customer service as well. And that is so true. If there's a product that I'm brand loyal to, I don't mind driving. I don't mind paying for it because you know you've got a great product. And if you do have a need of service, you know you're going to get good customer service as well. So that definitely rounds out the package of a good product. Um, what lessons have you learned along the way in the creation of the Iris booth and working with the different customers or the different students in the universities with the professional headshots? What lessons have you learned along the way that you would like to share with someone? Because essentially you took your years of career and you became an entrepreneur. And it sounds like you have a very good selling product a product that's in demand, I will say. What has been some lessons learned along the way? Oh my gosh, that's a... That you would like to share with others who might be thinking about taking a leap in a sense. That's, that's such a big question in my mind because who I am today versus who I was when I started this journey, those two people are unrecognizable to each other. This has been such a personally transformative experience for me. I've had to learn so many things so quickly and meet so many people and navigate so many different social, professional, and corporate environments that I have absolutely, I had no experience in before I started. Um, that it's hard for me to even think about who I was six years ago. Again, I, I'll say that it wasn't courage, it was really just. Um, a lack of understanding of what I was trying to do that that got me as far as it did, because I'm convinced that if I had understood how arduous the journey would be, I wouldn't have taken it on. But I'm so grateful that I did. It's like everything in life, you do something really, really hard, and it hurts while you're doing it. And you just think, what am I doing this for? But then when you look back and you see, it's like climbing a mountain and then suddenly you turn around and you go, wow, I've climbed this entire mountain. It was so worth it. Um, so I don't know. I just think everything in life is, should be challenging because that's how we create our best selves. I love that perspective because sometimes that's the only way, or most times that's the only way we grow is taking on challenges and um, stepping up to the plate and it has served you well and is creating you space, as you said before, you know, for more joy and happiness. So you speak about this personal transformation that you experienced through the development of the Iris booth. And I'd like to know, what do you envision for yourself? You know, I'm sure there's more to come. Um, that's a wonderful achievement that you've accomplished. So what do you envision for yourself and the company over the next five years? We are definitely at an inflection point right now where we're seeing, you know, growth grow exponentially year over year. So uh, my son, I'm very proud of this, just finished his MBA and he's joined the company and he is driving growth for us as well. Um, the big challenge for me now is to move away from the mindset of a of a smaller business to a larger global business and that creates a lot of um new learnings and new understandings and new explorations for me personally how do you grow and run and put procedures and documentation around a much larger business so every year there's new things for me to keep learning so then i just keep getting excited about the business all over again. So I see massive growth ahead. Um, I see a lot of new markets. We're seeing a lot of, um, you know, we see huge success in one vertical and then we realize, wow, this could be transferred to a lot of different places. So I see nothing but really, you know, hard work and bright days ahead. Very optimistic. Congratulations to you and your son on him receiving his MBA and 
you spoke about how he's coming to join the company and to work in the company. And I can only imagine, I want you to spend a few minutes to this. I can only imagine the the feeling or the joy that you have in being able to create a company that provides employment, not just for others, but your own children, but then to have an operate, then to have an opportunity to create generational wealth. I mean, that has to be an awesome feeling for you as a mom. So Iris Booth is certainly something that I'm proud of. My friendships and relationships, I value. Being a mom is, overshadows all of those things. So being a mom is my true calling. I am incredibly proud of both of my children. But to be able to provide for them is, you know, really what it's all about. Everything is for my children. So everything I do, every time I push myself, every time I, you know, move beyond my comfort zone, I'm always very aware. I, my children are watching not what I say, but what I do. So I want them to see me strive. I want them to see me struggle. I want them to see me overcome and conquer. So having done this, they saw some pretty hard times. They saw me break more than once, but they always saw me get up the next day and keep moving forward. That's the most important thing. So to be able to create not just an example for them, but like you said, uh, to, to create a business that they can participate in, wealth that they can continue to enjoy, maybe even after I'm gone, um, really is, is exceptional. I mean, I'm speechless by the question because it's just so, it's just so rewarding to be able to give that to my children and to watch them step into that space. And I can hear that in your voice. And I know your kids are, are proud of you as well, you know, leading by example and uh, showing them how, you know, to uh, move out beyond fear and beyond challenges and to pursue things that are in their hearts and things that they want to do. I love a good family business. I tell you, I love a good family business. And just to think about the rewards that will be coming down to lo- down the line uh, with the Iris booth. And I can see expansion with that. And I'm here sitting here thinking like, I want to go visit an Iris booth. <laughs> I'm in Indiana, <laughs> but I don't know if there's anything like that near me, but it sounds like a wonderful opportunity just to experience this new modern technology. And like you said, we love pictures. We, we love to capture memories and things like that. And we need the professional headshots. And I don't know of a place here in my area where I can do that. So I think you've got a very, very good product. And as you said, it's growing exponentially and I could see more future growth in this and other things that you desire to pursue. Um, As we wrap up our time here today, uh, um, as we wrap up our time here today, Sue, I just want to thank you for speaking from the hat of a mother, because I know that's a mother's dream is that her children will be fine. Her children will be successful and they will be able to have the things that they need provided for them. So I know that encouraged some women who will be listening to the podcast. But before we wrap up our time here today, Sue, I just want to ask you, is there anything else you'd like to leave with our listening audience today? So I would be remiss not to mention speaking of family business, that my husband also works in the business and he heads up our school partnership program, which has been the leader in our growth in the past year or two. So to that end, I would say uh, success should never be lonely. It should never be solo. The more you share success, uh, the more that success is meaningful, the more it grows, um, the more it It just, I feel like there's nothing worth having that isn't shareable. So being able to share the success with my children, with my family, with the broader community, we really have a focus on image parity and leveling the playing field. And, you know, I think this serves a lot of 
um, underprivileged people who might not have that that avenue to success that other people could have if they went and paid the $500 for a headshot. So it makes me feel good. I get messages from, you know, young students saying this, this changed everything for me. This gave me confidence. It gave me courage to also strive. So I think just sharing success is really what, what this is all about. That was a powerful statement that you shared there. Sue. And again, I love it. Um, Family working together and providing these essential needs in in the professional world, if you will, through the Iris booth. That is a wonderful creation that you have made here. And I'm sure as I continue to look around for the Iris booth, I'll find my hope in a photography (laughs) booth near me (laughs) uh, soon. So, Sue, as we wrap up, I'd like to ask you, how can people find and follow you beyond our conversation here on the podcast? So our website is irisbooth.com. You can certainly check us out online. We're also on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, irisbooth.com. Uh, We're in, I think, 50-some-odd universities in the U.S. and a number in Canada. We're in lots and lots of businesses, and you'll see us at every major event on the world stage. We've been to the World Economic Forum, South by Southwest, Microsoft World Inspire. We've been to all of them. So if you see us, please do come and say hello. Check out the booth. I hope we're going to be at an event you happen to attend soon, Sherry, so that you can try us for yourself. Um, We just want to share this technology with the world because we think it's, you know, it doesn't seem like something that's going to make a difference, but it can occasionally make make a difference in someone's uh, career, someone's life, or even just how they happen to feel about themselves that day. Well, Sue, thank you for joining us today. I have had a pleasure in speaking with you and learning more about the Iris booth. And I do hope that I will see one in a city near me soon as um, I'll be out doing some traveling here soon. So I most definitely will come and say hello and maybe one day meet the great creator of this awesome product. Well, again, thank you for joining us today. And to all you listeners, please stay tuned for more podcast conversations. Hopefully Sue will come back and join us again. But until next time, friends, stay safe and be great. That brings us to the close of this edition of Innovate Marketing. We're glad you tuned in. Innovate Marketing is brought to you by MyPodcast.media. MyPodcast.media produces podcasts for brands, influencers, and nonprofits. Find us online at mypodcast.media. Your producer for Innovate Marketing is Beth Freed. Executive producer, Sean Neal. And your host is Sherry Peak. We'll see you next time. Be sure to tune in.